Welcome to the Stable Program Neonatal Stabilization Simulation Project. I'm Chris Carlson, the author of the Stable Materials and founder of the Stable Program, and this is Dr. Jody Anderson, who is our Medical Director for Simulation. Dr. Anderson is a neonatologist and she also runs the Pediatric Simulation Program at Oregon Health Sciences University in Portland. We all know that newborn care in neonatology is a dynamic and ever-changing field. One of the newest and probably most exciting changes we've seen in the past decade is the introduction of simulation. Thanks, Chris. This is really exciting, the introduction of simulation into the STABLE program. Simulation can be thought of as an instructional strategy used within a curriculum to help learners achieve specific learning objectives. Within the STABLE program, we have cognitive knowledge objectives, technical or procedural objectives, and behavioral objectives. Getting at these behavioral objectives can be tricky. The essential behaviors for optimal performance during stabilization and crisis situations are derived from crisis resource management, also referred to as CRM. When we look at our problems in medicine, air rates, for example, some estimate, like the IOM, that over 100,000 patients die each year as a result of medical air in our hospitals. That's the equivalent of a jumbo jet crashing every day for a year. It's really not acceptable. And we look at where these errors come from. They come from problems with our teamwork, with our communication, from problems with our behavioral skills. So there's a real push right now coming from the Joint Commission, from the IOM, and, and from those of us that really care about patient outcome to start addressing our needs in behavioral skill training. And that's what simulation allows us to do. Within the STABLE program, we talk about behavioral skills within three categories. And they're based in the history of STABLE, A-R-A, -A, anticipate, recognize, and act. We're going to go through all of these skills and how these behaviors fit into each of these categories as we teach you to consider the behavior aspect of performance when we review the upcoming scenes. So what is a logical starting point for introducing a simulation-based education program in your facility? First, a didactic basis, such as the stable program curriculum, is the first step before practicing with simulation. The goal is for caregivers to demonstrate understanding of post-resuscitation care principles and to also practice clinical decision-making while at the same time managing challenging behavioral and technical components of these time-pressured emergencies. Another key point is that teamwork is an important component of the stable simulation curriculum. We work in a dynamic environment with a variety of professions including physicians, specialists, nurses, respiratory therapists, pharmacists, social workers, etc. Therefore, when we train with other disciplines, we practice realistic team interactions. Ultimately, this will increase our understanding of how other professionals view and process information while responding to a clinical situation. You will find that the stable scenarios all involve interprofessional participant roles and we strongly believe that those roles should be filled whenever possible by people who work in that discipline. To expect a nurse to play a doctor or a doctor to play a nurse will dilute the intended effect of the simulation. Another benefit of simulation-based education is that it offers an opportunity to purposefully introduce challenging behaviors and communication that we occasionally encounter in the workplace, yet we have limited opportunity to practice how to resolve those situations. For example, in simulation, we can script confrontations that involve intimidation or errors that would lead to patient harm. And then the interprofessional participants can practice what they've learned with regard to communicating under pressure or, for example, how to activate the chain of command. The ultimate goal of the stable program simulation-based education is to improve patient care and safety. We now have an opportunity to take what we learned didactically and practice in the safe environment of a simulated scenario. This dynamic way of learning will translate to more effective handling of challenging clinical situations and emergencies when they are encountered.